So today I want to get back to the 6.5 PRC. The plan is to shoot some of these 140 grain Hornady match boat tail hollow point bullets with Reloader 26. But we've got some ongoing problems that we need to figure out before we get to that. So this is the third 6.5 PRC video. Back in the first one, I had problems with the sizing die from this Redding Master Hunter die set. I stuck several cases and decided to send it back to Redding. So here it is, back from Redding. They even include a little sample of Imperial sizing die wax. Look at that cute little thing. Here's my normal big tin to give you some idea. Stuff lasts forever. I think I've been working on this same tin for at least 10 years. Not that I always use this, right? I mean, I use different lubes in different situations, but this tiny little sample is enough for thousands, a couple thousand. It's pretty good stuff. So what did they do to the die? That's the question. So the corrective action here was polish ultrasonic clean die, test with supplied cases using Imperial wax. Die is seasoned with Imperial sample included, cases sized easily. We'll grab the borescope here in just a minute and have a look at their polish job. But if you missed the second video, I bought this Lee sizing die and it worked pretty good for us. Didn't have any issues with this one. So hopefully the Redding die is in the, in the same shape now. Another thing I want to mention, I was going to make a separate video about it, but decided not to. I finally got my Silencer Co. Omega sent in to Silencer Co. and replaced. Some of the baffles near the center of this guy had gotten cracked and deteriorated. So what they ended up doing, let me pull off the direct thread adapter. That's the first thing. They gave me a shiny new direct thread adapter. And same thing with the end cap. They replaced the end cap. And we've got a whole fresh new stack of baffles. So the main covering of this is just a thin sleeve. Yeah, this thin little sleeve is glued to the main suppressor body. So what I've basically got here is a brand new suppressor with my old sleeve put onto it. So pretty cool, this was all uh, replaced under warranty. The turnaround time was crazy fast on this. I mean, I think they had it a day or two before it was shipped back to me. The, the Redding, it wasn't bad. Like, I think they maybe had it a week or two. It definitely wasn't fast. It wasn't an immediate turnaround, but it wasn't long enough to where I even started worrying about it. And, you know, there was no charge from Redding either. And I got a nice little die box and a sizing wax sample. So pretty happy. I tell you what, let me grab the bore scope and we'll have a look in this guy. Go ahead and pull out the expander. And let's try and dive in for a look. Now, whenever we took this view in the first video, you could tell that the walls of the die had a lot of brass coloring which I think what it came down to was that first piece of brass had just galled and smeared all over this thing. So some of this crap, that's lube, that's not cracking. Let me, let me grab a paper towel, I'll clean this out of there. Yeah, not too bad, just a little in there. Okay, that's a whole lot better. Yeah, up here in the neck, it looks kind of like it did. So basically the whole die kind of looked like that. And now it looks like this. These marks that go straight are kind of interesting. I don't know, what would you call it? Longitudinal lines? Whatever. I'm trying to think of polishing or lapping tools that would leave those marks. Kind of interesting. Okay, so that's enough of that. Now the one part on their corrective action that I'm not sure I understand is dye is seasoned with imperial sample included. So I'm not sure what seasoning they're talking about. Does that just mean they left some lube in there? I don't know. But, so I just wiped this one out, obviously. So before we go to use it, I'm gonna take a Q-tip with their included sample of Imperial Sizing Dye Wax and just make sure there's a good coating in there. All right, so I think I've got it well coated and most of the excess out of there. I'm gonna leave the expander out of the die for a second. So let's get this in the press and see if it works. Now for brass, this is, this is what I had sent them. And four of the five pieces were resized by them. So we can see some marks there on the cases. So I'm gonna grab a couple pieces of this Hornady brass. So this is Hornady brass that's been fired in my gun. I've obviously decapped them and then I annealed them. I still haven't picked up a larger set of rollers for my annealies, so I used uh, the salt bath annealing method that I've been using for several years. It works good for me, just gotta be careful not to burn myself. So I'm gonna use their little sample tin of Imperial Sizing Dye Wax and put a Put a light coat on these like normal. I'm going just a tiny little bit heavy on the lube, but not much. This is pretty much within the range of, of normal. 
but usually, especially with Redding dies, since they don't have, they don't have pressure relief holes. So just in general, I am much more likely to dent shoulders in Redding dies than I am with RCBS, Lee, or Hornady, because those dies have the hole for a little bit of pressure relief. So it might get a dented shoulder or two, but I'm, I'm fine with that. All right, those all feel good. Let's get the die in the press. Okay, we'll even use the Redding T7 turret press today. So I thought I would mention, back in that first video, the cases that got stuck were with RCBS case slick. This, this bottle came in that RCBS Rebel Master kit that I had bought, and that's what's left. And that was the first case I've stuck with this lube that I can recall. So I'm not really worried about this lube. I know it worked, but we're not gonna be using it today. All right, first one, not getting cute here. I've got the die uh, screwed down to make good contact with the shell holder. So we'll just see what happens. All right, here we go. Confident stroke, size like normal. Oh yeah, that went in, in there nice and easy and came right out. Yeah, that, that felt awesome. Let's go ahead and do the other four. Definitely has a little bit of a rough feel. Like as you're going up in there, it doesn't feel ultra smooth, it feels a little bit rough. Maybe that'll work itself out. I mean, that, that happens a lot on new sizing dies, especially one, you know, where they're kind of tight and you're a little bit worried about sticking cases. Once you get a couple hundred through it, it does seem to get a whole lot smoother. So I want to see how much we bump the shoulder on these cases. Because, so in the last video where we were using the Lee sizing die, the die was basically screwed all the way in to get enough shoulder bump. And part of that might be my fault because whenever I installed the barrel on the gun, I kind of set the head space on the short side. I mean, it, it's still in spec, like it closes on a go gauge, but just barely. So let's see what the numbers look like here. So it looks like this brass is starting out at 1.645. Let's see what the sized ones read. 1.644. Next one's 1.645. There's another 1.644, 1.644. So those are sized just about perfect one or two thousandths of shoulder bump. Let me grab the gun, make sure they fit. Okay, all five of those fit in the gun, no problem. So what I wanna do now is install our decapping and expanding assembly. And just for good measure, I'm gonna grab a little bit of Imperial wax and put it on the expander ball. Let's see if this works. So I wanna screw the die down in as far as I reasonably can. Yeah, like that's too far, that's too much, too much contact. Yeah, let's go right there. So that's the maximum shoulder bump I can get out of this die in this configuration, basically. So I'm gonna lube up another case and I'm gonna go ahead and use a Q-tip to lube the inside of the neck, at least here on the first few. And let's see what that gives us. Let me get a before reading on this particular piece. Okay, so the before reading on this piece is 1.646. And the after is 1.641. So bump the shoulder five thousandths, which is more than we would want, which I'm gonna consider a good thing. I didn't like having it screwed down that far anyway. Okay, backed it out just a little bit. Let's try another one. It's the same 1.646 before. Expander ball feels good. That is the carbide expander ball, which one of those comes with this die set. Okay, still a little bit too much. 1.642. This is good. I'm, I'm happy about this. Okay, let's try it about there. Now at this point, still making contact, but it's much lighter. It's, it's enough to get most of the, the slop out of the press, right? This turret press has got a little bit of turret tilt. So it, so it takes up that and not much more. Okay, this piece is 1.645 before. And it's 1.644 after. Try this next piece. I 
think we're dialed in. I'm going to get a few more pieces. Get a few more pieces ready here. So I'm seeing about a thousandth of bump. I'm going to go back down just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yep, that's perfect now. So I'm getting about two thousandths of shoulder bump. Perfect. So I've sized 50 pieces of the Hornady brass and everything's gone great so far. These are the, the first 25 that I used Imperial sizing die wax on. I've, I've wiped the lube off of these and these are ready to move forward. But just to give the die a little bit more of a workout, I've got some additional brass. I've already run 25 more pieces of, of Hornady brass and I'm about to switch over and do some Nosler brass. I've got 50 pieces of the Nosler that I figure we'll go ahead and try out. So in my last video where we were using the Lee sizing die, the Nosler did not get as much shoulder bump as the Hornady for the die setting we were using in that video. So I want to pay attention to it and make sure we get enough bump so the bolt closes easily on the gun. So the starting number here is 1.647. I think with the Hornady brass it was 1.645. So even coming out of the gun these are a little bit bigger. Now these have been lubed with lanolin just because it's easier, faster, and whenever I'm done sizing these I'm going to put them in the, in the tumbler to clean off the lube. So let's see what happens here on the first one. size coming out of the die is the same as the Hornady. So in the last video where we ran into that problem, I had not annealed the brass. So maybe annealing this brass is going to make it act a little bit more like the Hornady. I'm going to size a couple pieces and see how consistent they're looking. So I've got a weird situation here with the Nosler brass, and I wouldn't have even noticed it if I wasn't looking at the, the headspace on those first couple pieces. All of these, this whole group was reasonably consistent, and they, they all came out right about 1.643. But these three pieces back here, one of them was the first, one of the first ones I did, all three of these are like 1.648. Here's another one, 1.647. I tried sizing them a second time and that didn't help. So one of them, I, I put it up into the die and just left it there for like 30 seconds and pulled it out. Same thing, no difference. So that makes me think that I didn't anneal these properly, maybe. Like I mentioned in the last video with the Lee die, they already, the, the nozzles already kind of showed some inconsistencies and it wasn't all of the pieces in that video either. So, so maybe, I didn't get these annealed properly. The, the salt bath annealing method I'm using is a, you know, it's a manual method. So I might not have left these three in there long enough. I don't know. I'm going to set them to the side and we'll play with them later. Cause I, I need to get the, the large size wheels for the annealies and we could test these three to see how they act with a more consistent annealing setup, perhaps. I don't really know. For today's video, our sizing die seems to be in good shape now. So all of these ones with the lanolin lube, I'm going to tumble them in some hot soapy water to get the lube off. I'll keep these three separate and we'll play with them in the future. I'm trying to decide whether or not to trim. These are all below max, 2.030. I'm trying to see how much length variation I've got. It doesn't look like much at all. They're all coming out like five to seven thousandths short of max. I should probably trim them just to be as consistent as I can but they do seem to be stretching pretty consistently. Yeah, that last, the last one I measured is our longest. So 2.030 is the max case length in the book. And here's our shortest at 2.022. So I decided to go ahead and set up the Frankfurt Arsenal Case Trim and Prep Center to trim these cases. I didn't go all the way down to the trim length of 2.015. I went a couple thousandths longer than that. And I shot for 2.020. This one's a thousandths long. I'll find some that are a thousandth short. With these sort of trimmers that index off of the, the shoulder of the case, you're going to run into that some. So this brass has been fired twice. And primer pockets still feel really good. 
So I haven't even picked out load data. Let me figure out what I want to do and we'll talk it through. Okay, so this is kind of confusing. The Sierra manual with their 140 grain bullet, they show a max of 51.5. The Barnes website for the 140 grain match burner, they show 55.9 grains. The Hornady manual for this specific bullet we're shooting today shows 57.0. And back in the first video, I shot the 140 grain gold dot with Reloader 26 and shot 54.0 grains. So I don't understand why Sierra is so low. It's very strange. Now my velocity back in the first video with the 140 grain gold dot was 29.55. That's with my 24 inch barrel. And the Barnes data shows 29.84 with a 24 inch barrel. And the Hornady shows 31.50 with a 26 inch barrel. So that one doesn't apply to us so much. So I think I just need to load up a few rounds and we'll just go out and see where we're at as far as velocity. I say, I think we're probably safe to around 3000 feet per second, maybe farther, but maybe we'll, maybe we'll shoot for, for 3000 today. But our first couple shots, let's load up to 55.0 and we'll do half, half grain increments. So I'll load five shots starting at 53 and working up to 55. And then once we get that velocity data, then we'll, We'll pick some charge weights to shoot for groups. So overall length, I, I didn't shoot this bullet in the first video. So I pulled out the overall length gauge. We need to, we need to see how long we can shoot it in the gun. The Hornady manual shows 2.9 inches, but we better measure it. So I'll drop one of the bullets down in here. Then we use this little rod at the bottom to push it forward until it hits the rifling. So put that guy in and everything's pushed forward tighten that down. Now the bullet's going to stay in the rifling, so I'll knock it out with a cleaning rod real quick. Drop it back in there, and this is our maximum length. So this first one, 2.951. I'm going to repeat this pot process again. What I generally do is I do it again and make sure to use the same bullet. Then I'll move on to another bullet and take a couple measurements. And usually by you know three or four measurements, you got an idea of whether you're getting consistent numbers or if something weird's going on. This can be particularly frustrating with a new barrel, I've found. And I don't know if it's just that the the rifling is still you know sharp and jagged or something, or or what's going on in there. But I've just had I've had several new barrels where it was impossible to get a consistent reading out of it. But then once I had a couple hundred rounds on the gun it got a lot easier to measure. This barrel hasn't been too bad. Last time I went through this, I got pretty consistent numbers. So there's the next one, 2.947. So 2.951 was the first one. I need to start writing these down before I forget. So that's two measurements with that bullet. Now I'll move on to another bullet. Okay, first measurement with this next bullet, 2.946. Next measurement with that same bullet is 2.947. Double check. Yeah, 2.947. So with these four numbers, we could call it 2.947, but that, that first one that was 2.951, it's like, how does it get longer? Did I push too hard? I thought I applied the same force, more or less. But with this tool, your, your inconsistency should be short. Like you didn't push hard enough, or as you were tightening this down, you let this slip a little bit. It's hard to get a weird reading that's long, I guess is what I'm trying to say with, with the way this setup works. So what's the right number? 2.945, 2.950. I honestly don't care. What we'll shoot today is 2.930. And, you know, we'll just call it more or less 20 thousandths off the lands. Maybe it's 16 thousandths. Maybe it's 17. Who cares? You know, so if I'm picking 2.930 as a starting point, if I start messing with that, I'm going to go farther from the lands, not closer. So I don't feel like I really need to be all that precise. Okay, so we've got our overall length. We've got some charge weights. Last thing I can think of here is to get our seating die ready. So this set of Master Hunter dies has got the Redding Competition Seater die. And I got the, I didn't have it during the first video, but I ordered the VLD seating stem. Haven't even opened it. There it is. So that's what the Redding stems look, look like. Let's pull, let's pull the stem out of this guy. First thing I wanna do is get a look at the difference between them so I can tell them apart, hopefully. Oh, that won't be too hard. The VLD stem has got that groove in it. That's good, that's really good. So VLD stem on the bottom, standard stem on the top. It's pretty easy to spot the thicker material around the, the standard stem. So good, these won't be too hard to keep track of. Let's grab a bullet. Now this is a pretty, 
pretty standard traditional match bullet. So the standard stem here feels good. Yeah, it feels like that fits, fits nice. And so does the VLD stem really. We'll stick with the standard stem and, and see how it does. If it's marking up the bullets at all, we'll change it out if needed. Just double checked my instructions because I'm not used to this die. But screw it down until it compresses the little spring loaded chamber and touches the shell holder. And then back off of that a little ways to make sure the ram doesn't hit the die. So we're in good shape here. Let's back out the adjuster. And our target is 2.930. Right now we're at 2.974. So what's that, 44 should be close right there. And there it is. You seat the rest of them and see what the average looks like. Still quite a bit of empty case here. Just looking at the case fill there's room for a whole lot more. Okay, so our number's varying all the way from 2.932 is the longest and 2.926 is the shortest. It's not uncommon with hollow point match bullets. I need to get the bullet comparator and get a cartridge based ogive measurement. Need to switch calipers. That's the set that's freaking out. Notice that in my last video. I need to get a, need to get a new battery for it. Okay, these are all coming out the same at 2.355 or a half thousand shorter than that. We're going to call it 2.355. All right, so I've marked these with their charge weights. So let's get out to the range and shoot these five. I probably won't even worry about dragging a camera back in here. Weigh the charge, seat the bullet, not much to it. All right, let's get to the range. Okay, so it's time to get started. This is a Savage 110 Precision, but this is a factory barrel from a 6.5 PRC 110 that someone sent me. And it's a 24 inch barrel with a one in eight twist. The target is at 100 yards. The lab radar set up to get velocities. I've got the shot marker system running, so you'll probably see that as well. And just so you know, shot marker collects velocities at the target. So the velocities I'm talking about are gonna be muzzle velocities from the lab radar, but the ones on the shot marker screen you might see are at the target. A little bit confusing. Okay, let's start at 53.0 grains. That first velocity was 28.56. Okay, so that's velocity's pretty close to what we were expecting. We're not really gaining velocity as fast as I thought we would, or I thought we might. It looks like the bullet's gonna group, except for that first shot out to the right. Tell you what, let's get rid of it or hide it real quick. So those four are into 0.83 inches. Okay, so the two grain charge weight difference from 53 up to 55, we gained like 75 feet per second. So let's see if we can go on up to 3000. I need to go in and load. I'll just keep going on this track. So I'll load 55.5, 56.0, 56.5, .0, 56 and 57.0. And that takes us up to Hornady's max, which was the highest max of all of those that we talked about earlier. So probably going to get pretty spicy, but we'll give it a shot. I'll go load those and be right back. Okay, got them loaded up and it's too far to walk down there to turn on my target camera for four shots. So we'll just roll with shot marker. This first one's 55.5. The bolt in this gun does crater primers just a little bit, and it's getting more prominent. Yeah, it's kind of gradually cratering just a little bit more and more. OK, 
Okay, we're up to 2990. 56.5's next. Up oh, there's our 3,000 feet per second. Let's see, bolt lift feels good. It's looking good. So here's 57.0. Okay, that's 3033 and nothing scary on the brass okay what should we do next got 15 pieces of brass ready to load and a whole bunch more if we need it so let's take our 56.5 grain charge weight that was 3008 feet per second and let's load up three five shot groups with that and let's shoot three different overall lengths we'll use what we've already been using which is 2.930 and I want to shoot increments big enough so you guys can complain about me jumping nodes in the comments. So let's go with 10 thousandths of an inch. So I'll load 2.930, 920, and 910. And that should be enough to give us an idea of what groups are looking like. Groups, I'm thinking this is going to be pretty good. And let's just hope the SDs are reasonable. All right, I'm going to go load those 15. Be right back. Okay, the ammo is loaded up. So this first group at 2.930 inches is going to be our six shot group because I've only taken nine shots so far, so I've got 16 pieces of brass left. Might as well use them. Okay, so our velocity was 3,006 feet per second, standard deviation 7.7. .7. So the group was 1.1 inches, not too bad. Remember back on the last group, it threw the first shot right. Let's see what this is without that first one. Okay, the last five shots went into 0.82 inches. I'll tell you what, the recoil on this gun feels so nice. It's very light that you kind of forget how much powder you're burning. The winds are pretty calm and I had to wait out some Mirage pretty quickly, like the fourth, fifth shot. I was already getting quite a bit of suppression mirage. So I'm gonna let things cool down and then we'll move on. So that turned into a longer break than I intended. The gun's pretty much back to totally cold. So let's see if this first shot goes right like it has on the other groups. 2.920 inches. Ah, that last shot took us over an inch, didn't it? So velocity 29.98, SD 6.3, and the group is 1.07. Let's see what it is without 5.84 inches. This is not too bad, but I'd like to really put this last one together and get a group size we could brag about. This is 2.910 inches. That shot did not feel good. The gun jumped kind of weird there after I shot. Okay, that's weird. Very weird. The fifth shot felt better than the fourth shot. Like I, I really thought I had pulled the fourth shot, but the fifth shot felt okay. So who knows? Still our best group of the day, 0.89 inches. That's not too bad. So we nailed our, our velocity target. Average velocity was 29.99, standard deviation 7.5. Man, these velocities and SD numbers are awesome. Really good stuff. All right, let's get back to the bench. So these are the first nine pieces of brass we used. So that was the 53.0 grain charge, and then over here is the 57.0. I'm gonna try to get a comparison and show you the difference in the primer cratering. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's this little ridge around the primer strike. And it definitely got a little bit worse as we went along, which is, which is good info, right? This, this barrel's still brand new to me. So trying to figure out what's good and what's bad and what might be a warning sign is important. You know, this is minor, but you know, maybe one of these days the knowledge will come in handy. So that max charge still, I mean, the, the brass looks good. On the rest of the brass, there's nothing additional to show you really. So I'll admit that it's a little bit sad because when we look at our target, this first group, which was 53 grains to 57 grains, 
2850 feet per second all the way to 3033 feet per second. So all of those crazy loads shot this group and then our later loads for groups didn't really shoot any better. So a little bit disappointed I wasn't able to put together uh, better groups. And I think it comes down to the fact that I'm just not that comfortable behind this gun. I gotta get better with this gun. I bought the gun as a 300 Win Mag and these complaints go all the way back to the beginning, but I, I just, I need to, I need to find a front bag that fits better. I think that's a big part of it. I'm getting too much rotation on the gun and that the MDT chassis of this gun just doesn't have a very big flat spot on the front. So something that supports that a little bit better maybe. And right now I'm shooting the vertical grip on that gun. And I may try going back to the, the standard stock grip to see if it feels any better. Cause I, this just, it feels like my fault here, man. These groups should have been better. I mean, especially with the nice light recoil of this gun. I put the, they call it the anchor break on the front of the, the Silencer Co. Omega. I haven't shot this thing since back when I first got the suppressor. It's just like a little brake attachment that connects at the end. So maybe that helped a little bit. Happy to have the Silencer Co. Omega back in service. I'm gonna do my best to take care of it a little bit better this time. And you know, like with the anchor brake, the, the reason I didn't use it is I couldn't get the old one, or I couldn't get the old end cap off. Same thing with that direct thread adapter that they replaced. I couldn't get it off anymore. So kind of like we were talking about back in my suppressor cleaning video, I'm, I'm regularly taking these apart. I'm using anti-seize on all of the threads. I'm gonna soak them in piston clean, ultrasonic clean them a little bit every once in a while, try and keep them just in better shape than I have been. So I think that's pretty much it. You know, for, for all of the disappointment I've got in the groups, the velocities were great. We hit our target. The SD numbers were crazy good. So this combination of, of powder and bullet definitely is gonna get some follow-up work. We're gonna keep working on it. Cause I've got a lot of these bullets. I love these bullets. My 6.5 Creedmoor Thompson Center Compass shoots this bullet better than any we ever found. So hopefully here with a little bit more work in the 6.5 PRC, we'll be able to find something pretty good. So I think that's pretty much it. I mean, super excited to have the Redding sizing die back in service and that behind us so we can move forward. So lots of good stuff. We'll, we'll work on the groups. All right, I'll see you guys next time.